The Kathmandu Valley is stunning. However, upon arrival to Kathmandu, the hazy sky immediately stands out. When looking at air quality data from last month in Kathmandu, we can see a common theme. Despite the beginning of the monsoon, the air quality never reached safe levels. Unfortunately, this is now the norm throughout the country. Air pollution is a major problem with real impacts. In 2019, 42,100 deaths in Nepal were attributed to air pollution. Where does this air pollution come from, and why is it such a huge issue in Nepal? Kathmandu's air quality has been ranked as the worst in the world. Pollution climbed to hazardous levels, forcing millions of students to stay home. A thick layer of smog enveloped the Nepal capital, Kathmandu. When looking at a breakup of air pollution in Nepal, we can see that 38% is from transportation. Out of the transportation sector, 79% of vehicles are motorcycles. This makes sense when looking at the streets. Dense traffic flow is nearly non-stop, many vehicles are outdated, and emissions here aren't well regulated. To reduce emissions, it makes logical sense to start shifting Nepalis towards electric vehicles. They are now cost-effective as batteries have become much cheaper over time, and overall emissions from electric vehicles are far lower. However, a report on public transportation in Nepal demonstrates that this isn't what Nepalis want. Instead of fancy electric vehicles, the consensus is that better public transportation is what's needed. Current public transportation is unreliable and inefficient, incentivizing Nepalis to use motorcycles, which are comparatively more reliable and efficient. BRT, or bus rapid transit, is the golden solution. BRT utilizes a bus-only lane, elevated bus stations, and cashless payment to make buses an incredibly efficient means of transport in the city. It's kind of like turning your bus system into a subway station, and it's actually pretty cool. Several other developing nations have successfully utilized BRT to revolutionize transport in their cities and to reduce overall emissions. BRT can also make affordable, clean, and efficient transportation far more accessible in a city. Currently, large buses experience the most congestion on the road and are slowed by traffic. With a BRT system, this congestion is pushed to private vehicles, making them less efficient and incentivizing people to start using public transport. This effect worked incredibly well in Jakarta and incentivized many motorcycle riders to start using public transport. Kathmandu's Ring Road has been proposed as a location for a BRT system. The 27km road allows access to most locations in the city and is wide enough for dedicated BRT lanes without major changes. However, Kathmandu faces a unique problem. All mass transit in Kathmandu is privately owned and isn't of standardized shape or size. In most cities, BRT infrastructure is built for an existing government-owned public transportation system. However, one expert believes that Kathmandu can and needs to implement a bus rapid transit system. In any large city, the public transportation system works as the backbone for transports. This is Bhushan Tuladhar, an environmental activist who's worn many impressive hats. So, within the transport sector, what we have right now is complete chaos in a way, right? So we have public transport that is primarily run by private sector. Then we've got private, you know, vehicles all over the place. In between, we have, you know, pedestrians, cyclists, and all over the place. There is so much potential to move forward. Like if we say 27% of trips on public transport now, we could double that to 54%, right? Or even triple that. Considering that Nepalese, for the most part, do not own vehicles. The census data showed that 3% of Nepali households have cars. It's just 3%, right? Then there's you know, another 27% that own motorcycles. They depend on public transport. How do you improve public transport? Worldwide, what we have seen is a bus rapid transit system does that, right? At a fraction of a cost, of a metro, it's basically metro on wheels. We need a system, okay? And there have been some studies that have been done, right? But it hasn't, you know, materialized so far the way we want it. What do you think a feasible compromise would be that Kathmandu could implement now? It makes a lot of sense to invest in a bus rapid transit system, but while doing that, the first step could be trial of a dedicated bus lane, um, which is a lane where only public transport vehicles are allowed to run um, and they will run quicker and the guys who are in, in, in their private vehicles are stuck in traffic, they look left, 
they see the buses running, they will then switch to buses, hopefully, right? One of the largest bus operators in Kathmandu just released a fleet of 40 electric buses onto the streets. Well, this is incredible. Electric public transport has already existed in Nepal for 30 years. All around the city are these funny looking little cabs with three wheels and two headlights. The tempo is an icon of Kathmandu. What is special about these cabs is that many of them are electric. However, these tempos used to suck. Locals deemed them the smoke belching tempos and even threatened to stone them if they came to their neighborhoods. However, in 1993, everything changed when the deputy mayor of Kathmandu took a trip to Eugene, Oregon. Here, environmentalist Peter Moulton said, hey, you know those little diesel tempos you have? Let me come to Kathmandu and I bet I can make one electric. With support from the Global Resources Institute and USAID, within two years, the first prototype electric tempo was formed. However, just as importantly, these NGOs lobbied to lower import taxes for electric vehicles, and they made the electric Safa Tempo one of the most profitable options for public transportation operators. Now these little electric three-wheelers have been scaled, and 700 tempos are in use today. They are nimble, reliable, and still in use almost 30 years later all over the streets. Ultimately, a bus rapid transportation system will save countless lives through improved air quality in Kathmandu. What is needed now is investment and action.